Welcome to NASCAR Coast to Coast, presented by Wheelan Engineering and also brought to you by Hercules Tires. I'm Hannah Newhouse, joined always by my co-host, Kyle Ricky, as we bring you short track racing across the country. This week, though, the short track of Martinsville Speedway was taken over by the NASCAR Wheelan Modifieds Tour as they opened up their 2021 campaign in the Virginia's for Lovers 200. And Kyle, after Mother Nature, finally let us get some racing, and it turned out to be quite an exciting race. I think they're still racing there, aren't they? <laughs> yeah. Is the cup race done yet? Just kidding. Uh, kind of. Uh, but yeah, it was great to see the Modifieds back at the Martinsville Speedway. First time in 11 years. Uh, obvi- and we talked last week about it. You know, it's kind of one of those marquee modified track that, you know, is not in the Northeast. You know, when you think of modified, it's Baffert or Thompson. Uh, and back then, back in the 60s, 70s, 80s, and even some of the 90s, uh, Martinsville Speedway was high on the list and it was great to see uh, the tour back at that racetrack on Thursday night but on a great show yeah a lot of excitement leading into it we had series director Jimmy Wilson on last week to preview it and a lot of folks that I know that were there whether it was for the Xfinity weekend or some of the cup guys that went up and watched that race uh, were very excited about it and it didn't disappoint including a uh, I would say top two maybe that were a little bit more of a surprise than usual that being your winner of Eric Goodale uh, exciting finish for him to be able to finally capture that clock. We'll talk to him a little bit short or a little bit later here in the show. But second place was Tyler Ripkema. Third, Justin Bonsignor. After fighting an oil leak right before the race began, I do believe. Uh, but constant action, lots of carnage. I think this is a perfect way to open up the season, though, Kyle. Yeah, uh, it's a great way to open up the season on, on a big stage like that. And some new names, as you mentioned, toward the front of the field. Last year's Rookie of the Year, Tyler Ripkema, I thought was going to get his first win. Um, be interesting to talk to Eric here in a little bit to see if he was concerned about maybe getting the bumper from Tyler there on the last lap. But it's Eric's first win since 2017, so good to see him back in victory lane. And you must have mentioned last year's champion, Justin Bonsignor, uh, had some of those pre-race issues on the grid, had to first rectify it and then start the race from the back of the pack and, and dodge all of the early carnage. And uh, he was able to get to the top five, finish third. Good start for Justin and that team, uh, overcoming adversity once again. Yeah, and also, uh, well, what was supposed to be, I believe, Friday and then actually was Sunday. While it's not necessarily a short track series, we do get to talk about it because One of our favorite short track racers, Josh Berry, collected that Xfinity Series win. I had friends that were there also. They said you didn't even know a cup race was coming up shortly afterwards because Martinsville Speedway was going to burn that place to the ground with Josh Berry finally getting that win. And I think that says a lot for short track racers in general of seeing someone like that who's cut their teeth in the ranks, done their time, gets an opportunity and capitalizes on it. I think Dylan said it best in victory lane when talent meets opportunity. And this is a perfect example of that. Uh, We've talked about Josh Berry for years here on the show in his late model program, pairing up uh, the the tracks down South, winning the national championship last year, the NASCAR advanced auto parts division one national title um, has had this opportunity with Dale Earnhardt jr. And junior Motorsports, along with the late model program, but on the national level, the last couple of years now, Um, But this being the first real opportunity where he's found some continuity, where he's strung a few races together now, got comfortable in the garage, got comfortable in the car, certainly comfortable at Martinsville Speedway after winning the late model race there two years ago. Great to see. Um, And I know Dale Earnhardt Jr. said in this post-race interview, he he didn't even want to watch the last five, ten laps. He was peeking around the corner to make sure a caution wasn't coming out or making sure something didn't happen to the car. Uh, but then when Josh took the white flag, finally was able to to enjoy the last lap of the race with wife Amy. Great to see Josh. Um, one of the feel-good stories of, of the season will probably end up being one of the top feel-good stories of 2021 when the season is all said and done. Yeah, I know. They celebrated that win uh, for sure on Sunday evening. So, again, we want to send our congratulations out to Josh Berry and the entire Junior Motorsports team on that win. But we're going to take a quick break. When we get back here, we'll dial up your Virginia's Is for Lovers 200 winner, Eric Goodale. Whelan Engineering, a global leader in the emergency warning industry, designs and manufactures reliable and powerful warning lights. Whelan also produces white illumination lighting, sirens, controllers, and high-powered warning systems for automotive, aviation, and mass notification industries worldwide. Every part of every Whelan product is proudly designed and manufactured in America and is tested on site to meet the toughest industry certifications. Whelan Engineering, a global leader in the emergency warning industry, trusted to perform since 1950. 
Citywide to countryside, whatever you drive, wherever you go, Hercules has the value, selection, and industry-leading warranty to get you there no matter where the road takes you. Go to HerculesTires.com. There you can find the nearest authorized Hercules retail location to you. Plus, you can use the tire tracker to find out which Hercules tire fits your vehicle the best. That's HerculesTires.com. Hercules Tires, ride on our strength. In 2008, Eric Goodell made his debut in the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour and fast forward to this past weekend. Once again at the Martinsville Speedway, finds his way into victory lane. He joins us now as the winner of the Virginia is for Racing Lovers 200. Eric, first off, congratulations and thank you for taking some time to hang out with us here on NASCAR Coast to Coast. Yeah, thank you. Uh, obviously a good week, but excited to be with you guys and uh, see what you got for me. You said something about the last 40 laps of this race and all of a sudden came to you that, hey, I have a chance to win this race. What was going through your mind when you got to the back bumper of Bonds and you were ultimately uh, had a shot to win a Martinsville clock? Yeah, I, honestly, I mean, I, I, it may have been a little bit longer than the last 40 laps uh, when I when I was moved into third and I was able to chase uh, Justin and John McKennedy down, uh, I realized that I just needed a little bit and we were going to be really good or at least have an opportunity. And uh, just the way that the restart fell out and uh, positioned myself on the track, you know, Justin, you know, I don't know what adjustments they made, but we made the right ones and maybe he didn't make the right ones. And uh, I just had the better car there at the end. So I, I was joking when I was texting with him earlier that, uh, Winning the race was nice, but it was freaking sweet to pass him because <laughs> <laughs> not many people have gotten to pass him over the past couple of years. So uh, I, I made sure I almost messed it up the first time, but I made sure I wasn't going to mess it up the second time. Yeah, yeah, Justin's won two of the last three championships. I don't think he's finished out of the top five in the last year and a half. So uh, obviously very, very consistent and hard to beat Justin. You passed Justin, and as did Tyler Ripkema, uh, the rookie from last year. And he was hot on your tail there the last few laps. Any concerns uh, on that last lap that there might be a bump and run in play? Uh, I was ready for it, but, um, you know, I made a mistake with about five to go. I felt like I had a better car than Tyler, and I made a mistake getting into one. And I got in a little too hot, and I had to check myself up and allowed him to get back to me. And I know that he smelled the blood in the water and he was really, uh, you know, driving the wheels off his, to stay close to me. And I, I knew I was really good on entry and I just needed to not overdo it. You know, I was expecting the shot. Um, you know, uh, I, I felt like he would have had to make a really, really aggressive move to get around me without wrecking me. So, um, I, you know, hats off to him. He drove a great race. He had a rough race. He spun out earlier. He got caught up in that earlier accident and uh, they made all the right adjustments on their pit stop too. And to be able to come back and finish second. So, I was happy to see that for him. It was definitely an exciting last handful of laps to watch. Uh, I was watching it from work uh, on NBC Track Pass, and just uh, I had the audio off, everything, just watching it, and I was excited from there. But you did make a joke with your team prior to the race. You said, hey, if I win this, you're all getting clocks. And you won. <laughs> so first it off, where is your really clock going? Oh, so were they all getting <laughs> clocks then? <laughs> I got to figure something <laughs> out. how to weasel my way out of this one, boy. Woo! <laughs> Um, no, I, I mean, that was weeks ago. We were all joking because I, I was been real excited about Martinsville ever since that it was announced. And then, um, you know, everybody's like, ah, oh, you know, you win the clock, you win the clock. And I was like, yeah, that's great. We'll all get clocks and poof, they're holding me to it. <laughs> I got to figure out, I got to figure out where mine's going first. Uh, it's going to go somewhere where I can look at it an awful lot. That's for sure. And listen to it chime every hour for the rest of your life. <laughs> I know. I don't, I don't ever want to lose weight. I just want to be the fat guy walking around the house that sets the thing off every time. So <laughs> there you go. Let's talk about the, the, the day as a whole. Practice qualifying, uh, the race, a rain delay. How much did the track change? And, and how much, Justin, did you have to do to your car as the, the day unfolded to keep up with the track? Uh, so we did not make one adjustment on our car from the first practice until we made a small air pressure adjustment on the last stop. And that was it. I mean, minimal. And in my terms, we didn't even make an adjustment on the car. Um, 
And I, you know, what's funny is uh, I got out of the car after the, I went out two rounds of practice. I got out of the car and I told my crew chief, I said, don't touch it. You know, we were, I think at that time we were seventh or eighth on the speed charts. I didn't really care. The car was doing everything that I needed it to do. And uh, I just felt really comfortable. And then uh, I, I joked around when the rain came, I said, man, I like rain races because the race at Bristol that we won uh was rain shortened and we had a long rain delay in that one and we came out we were the best car after the rain delay so i I got excited a little bit when it rained um but nonetheless i knew we had a good car right from the get-go and it was pretty cool to not have to worry about how the car was going to handle in qualifying as opposed to the race it was just good all day long yeah it's not often you can climb out of a car and say don't touch it so talk about getting it getting it dialed in that's definitely a good feeling um and I mentioned it earlier, you made your debut with the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour in 2008 at Martinsville. And uh, we finally got the chance to return there for not only you as a driver, but also the tour in general. What does it mean to be able to have Martinsville and especially even Richmond back on the uh, schedule this year? Yeah, I, like I said, it, it was cool to have my first start be at Martinsville. Um I, I honestly, I mean, for the tour, it's great to have these large exposed uh, races to be on the main stage. I feel like we put on some of the best racing in the country. And um, I feel like the everyday NASCAR fan, um, just the typical, I'd say, NASCAR fan probably, you know, doesn't know about us or doesn't see us enough to be excited about it all the time. But, you know, to be to have the ability to be on to national TV and to go to these larger stage races um, definitely adds, you know, a dynamic to it and allows more fans the exposure to the series. And, um, you know, minus the rain delay and our, our parking lot job there on lap 13, I think that it was a pretty solid race. It had multiple different leaders, had lead changes. Uh, people were on different pit strategies and, uh, you know, I had everything that as a race fan that when you go to watch a race, it had, and, um, you know, that's typically what we try to do in those races, uh, any race that we can change tires anyway. So, um, excited to have that. And, you know, like you said, you mentioned risk Richmond. Uh, I think that's going to be another cool one. So, uh, I don't know the, the more, the, the, the ability to be race on these bigger tracks that, you know, fans know about and to have the exposure on TV certainly is not going to hurt the series because uh, I feel like we put one of the best racing products on the market out there. You mentioned the parking lot deal for the modified. It's okay. The cup series had a parking lot deal as well on, on Sunday. <laughs> so I think all the races may have had at least one over the weekend. Uh, Hannah mentioned Richmond coming back on the schedule. How excited are you? Because you're the first person I thought of when I saw the schedule to have Riverhead on there, not once, not twice, but three times this season for the first time, I think, since the early 90s. Yeah, well, if you would have asked me five years ago, I'd be ecstatic. Uh, But since then, since winning that race, I've really struggled there, actually. Um, I have not qualified well, and I've put myself in situations where – it's just it's it's not the same racetrack either you know they, they've they been spraying the syrup on the track and uh you know it's a it's a different dynamic at that track now so um we've been racing some local races there some of the longer ones to try to just get our foot in there and 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 you know find some speed i feel like we're we're increasingly getting better there um it, it's by no means i i feel like i can come out of there with a top 10 on a on a decent day um it's not a deal where i feel like we're going to show up and run 15th or 20th um but uh i i don't know i've just really struggled there i'm excited to go there three times because that means that's three races closer to home that i don't have to travel to upstate new york to richmond uh you know to new hampshire all that so that aspect of it i'm really good with but uh hoping that i can turn some of my later starts uh there around and have some better finishes yeah, looking forward to a lot of the changes on the Modified Tour schedule this year. Uh, we talked to series promoter last week, Jimmy Wilson, about all of some of the new initiatives as part of the tour, uh, the fact that you guys have one-day shows, and ultimately uh, the bragging rights that come with the Modified Tour and why fans should tune into that. But I think Modified Racing as a whole is just, uh, again, I'm a Fender person, grew up on the West Coast, didn't really know about the Modifieds until I moved out here and have become uh, very biased towards them. I actually thoroughly enjoy watching modified racing sometimes over fender guys, and my fender guys are going to come after me for that. But modified racing in the Northeast right now, to me as an outsider, 
looks to continue to grow and become healthy with some of the big races, even outside of the tour that is on the schedule this year. How would you evaluate as someone who's been, you know, part of the modified scene for a while, the health of modified racing right now? Uh, I mean, overall, I think it's healthy. I mean, um, you know, given up until last year, I mean, it was growing at a rapid pace and obviously what's been going on in the world has affected people in many different ways. Many people have come out looking very good on one side and other people it's really hurt on the other side, but um, the car counts continue to be there. I think you're seeing an overall shift um, in our community to where these open shows uh, are getting some funding put behind them and they're able to put on these big open shows like we just had at Thompson on Saturday, which was supposed to be Sunday, <clears throat> um, you know, for a $10,000 to win open tour type show, you have Stafford that puts on their open modified competition with 5,000 to win. I mean, those are good paying races uh, to show up and race. And there, you know, there was originally, I think 30 cars registered for Thompson, 25 showed up and Stafford's been putting 25 plus modifieds out there every time for their open shows. So um, I, I, I don't know that the, the landscape seems healthy to me. Um, I feel like a lot of the noise that you maybe hear in the pit area about the, the price and, you know, oh, it's crazy. You know, how many days you have to travel. A lot of that comes from the people who aren't making the decisions, but the people who are actually racing and own the cars uh, really are, I think, enjoying some of the landscape changes that has come over the last couple of years. And we'll uh, wrap it up. You mentioned Stafford a couple of times. Next stop for the tour is the Spring Sizzler here in just over a week's time. Uh, you've won there in a 150-lap event a couple of years ago. Sizzler is 200 laps. Uh, your thoughts about uh, tackling the Stafford Half Mile here in about 10 days? Yeah, I'm excited for it. Obviously, anytime we go to Stafford. Um, but we've been running really well there without any mechanical issues. We've been able to, you know, be right around the top five and I feel like have opportunities to win races there. Um, so, you know, we certainly have a good head of steam as a, as a team right now. Um, so, you know, I'm excited to go there. I would love nothing to do than to drink chocolate milk and spill it all over myself and have a good weekend. <laughs> you love to hear it. And I have one more question for you here that's not even actually a racing question. I've been trying to figure it out. In the back corner, I think it's maybe over your right shoulder. Is that a stuffed Mickey Mouse, or what do we got going on over there? Uh, yeah, this this is a Mickey Mouse. It is uh, <laughs> because when I Facetime my kids from work, they like to see them in the background. So I, uh, or when they come and see me at work, they want to play with them. So I leave them in my office and don't let anybody play with them. <laughs> <laughs> he's, a, he's a big Disney fan, Hannah, because when we did the spotlight a couple of weeks ago, he actually did the modified spotlight from Tomorrowland and the Magic Kingdom, which was pretty cool. Kyle, he's got I children, know you were though. <laughs> Bless. All right, Eric, we appreciate it. Uh, again, congratulations on that win. Looking forward to watching you on the tour this up and coming season. Awesome. I appreciate it, guys. Thank you. Again, guys, that was Eric Goodale, the winner this past weekend at Martinsville Speedway. And Kyle and him had talked about it. Spring Sizzler comes up in just under two weeks, April 25th at Stafford Motor Speedway. But we're going to take a quick break. When we return, we've got your NASCAR Wheelin Modified Spotlight brought to you by Wheelin Engineering. Whelan Engineering, a global leader in the emergency warning industry, designs and manufactures reliable and powerful warning lights. Whelan also produces white illumination lighting, sirens, controllers, and high-powered warning systems for automotive, aviation, and mass notification industries worldwide. Every part of every Whelan product is proudly designed and manufactured in America and is tested on site to meet the toughest industry certifications. Whelan Engineering, a global leader in the emergency warning industry, trusted to perform since 19. 52. Sir, are you aware you were going 40 miles an hour? This is a residential area. Sure, but I'm on my lawnmower. Wait, am I getting a ticket? No, I've just never seen anyone top 9 miles an hour on one of those bad boys. And mow their entire lawn in 30 seconds? What got into you? Well, it did fuel up at Sunoco this morning. At Sunoco, we know how to fuel peak performance. We've been doing it for American Racing for over 50 years. Fuel your best. For this week's Wheel and Engineering Modified Tour Driver Spotlight, able to catch up with 
two-time series champion and 29-time winner, Justin Bonsignor. Justin, first off, thanks for joining us here today. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. You've made a lot of headlines here over the last several seasons on the Modified Tour. We'll talk more about that in a moment, but I want to start where it started for you. Let's go back to the beginning and, and what got your interest in motorsports as a kid growing up? I grew up in a racing family. My, my dad and, and my uncles uh, owned and operated a, a pretty successful go-kart business. Uh, as me and my cousin Kyle and, and all the other cousins got older, we got into racing and traveled all across the, uh, the East Coast, out into the Midwest, and, and did a lot of go-kart racing. And, you know, naturally, as I got older, I wanted to continue racing. And uh, the next best, um, you know, next option for us in the, new, in the Northeast was to go modified racing at Riverhead Raceway. And um, I did a year of limited late models before that, but then jumped into the modifieds. And uh, we run full tour-type modifieds here at Riverhead Raceway full-time and um, did that for a few years. And that's, that's basically how I got into the, the modified circuit. It's rare. Uh, I don't know if it's ever happened that a, uh, a driver come out of Riverhead and go into stock car racing full time and in, in super <laughs> models and late models. So I assume modifieds have always been the goal of yours growing up. Yeah, for sure. You know, obviously, the as a kid, you always had bigger ambitions of going past that point. But as you get older and you realize the the history and the and heritage and, and just how important a wheel modified tour is, um, you, you want to be a part of that. And um, it, it went quickly from being a stepping stone series to somewhere I wanted to, you know, have my, have my future and my career, uh, shaped around. And, um, you know, as a kid, like I said, I would go to Riverhead to watch, I would go to the world series, I'd go to the fall final at, at Stafford and we'd, we'd go to all these races, um, and modified racing was just the place you wanted to be. You mentioned you, you've kind of shaped your career around the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour. Was there ever a goal to go beyond it into NASCAR's National Series? Yeah, there was always thoughts and ambitions that I could. Um, you know, obviously, it's a tough, tough uh, hill to climb. You need a lot of financial support. You need to have the timing of, of having people interested in you at the right time. And um, we never really could put all those pieces together. And, and what it takes um, as far as a whole year on a Modified Tour is, is just a couple of races at best in the in other series. So I, I didn't want to sacrifice what I had here. I was really, really enjoying what I was doing. And um, I've said this a lot of times, you know, Teddy, Christopher, and Mike Savannah, but we said there's nothing wrong with being a, a, a lifer in the modifieds. And um, if that's all my career ever has for me, I, I'm going to just make the best of it and um, try and be the best of, of, you know, the series if possible. That's just the goal is to go out and win races and, and contend for championships and, and hopefully win a few more. You've won two of them, one in a 16 race season a couple of years ago. And then you won last year's championship in a nine race season, uh, obviously one of the oddest years that we'll hopefully ever see. What will you take from, from both of those titles being so different, uh, you know, in, in this era of racing for NASCAR's modifieds being pre pandemic and then in the middle of the pandemic. <laughs> yeah. But you know, the first championship, uh, I don't know if anything will ever top that um, to go out and win half the races and just have that year we had, you know, being in contention to win nearly every week. Um, and then finally getting over that hurdle of finally being the guy that took Doug Kobe down after he won so many in a row and um, to do it in the way we did it with all the changes we made that year. It was just that that's hard to top. And, you know, your first one's always special. But, you know, with everything thrown at the whole series and, and just life in general in 2020 to go out and, you know, with all the uncertainties each and every week of where we'd even be racing, you know, are, are we going to have fans just everything that was involved with it just getting the cars to the racetrack and having people there to support you the second one also was pretty special um to win the first race after coming back from the pandemic win a few more along the way and then um you know ultimately win that second championship it um you know it was a little bit shorter of a season but we still went out and, and do what we needed to do each week finishing the top five every every race which has never happened before so all those things put together makes the, the second one really special as well but uh you know that first one is just uh it's it's like nothing else you've been around the tour now 15 years um hard to believe <laughs> do track announcers still butcher your last name yes for sure um you know up up in our, our area now i've been doing this long enough uh the normal racetracks uh they've got it down pat um with their little new england flares to it but uh there's times when we go out to some newer racetracks in other parts of the country and they, they really struggle. Um, you would think with two of us in the field, two Bonsignors, that they'd, they'd have a little more practice. But uh, as, long as, as long as they get it close, I don't really mind. As, if we're winning, it don't matter. 
Justin, I've been called worse. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Justin Bond, <laughs> senior or senior or however you want to say it. Thanks for joining us here this afternoon and in our NASCAR Wheeland Modified Tour in Wheeland Engineering Spotlight. Thank you so much. I just want to thank Wheeland and NASCAR for everything they do for our series. Wheelan Engineering, a global leader in the emergency warning industry, designs and manufactures reliable and powerful warning lights. Wheelan also produces white illumination lighting, sirens, controllers, and high-powered warning systems for automotive, aviation, and mass notification industries worldwide. Every part of every Wheelan product is proudly designed and manufactured in America and is tested on site to meet the toughest industry certifications. Wheelan Engineering, a global leader in the emergency warning industry, trusted to perform since 19. 19- this past weekend there were only a handful of tracks here in the south they were able to get some racing in uh, due to mother nature not really playing in our favor but one of those was greenville pick and speedway hosting the cars tour and southern super series combo event for the harrison workwear 150 unfortunately not able to run on saturday but able to Get a beautiful day in of racing on Sunday. Steven Nassi just showed why he is one of the best super late model racers in the country, collecting yet another win, followed by Carson Quapple and Sammy Smith. It was a uh, green-white checkered after a red flag incident. <laughs> Quapple almost had it with Steven Nassi, but Nassi got the win. On the West Coast, Bill McAnally Drivers Academy had their second race weekend of their season at All-American Speedway. It would be Cole Moore taking the victory over Amber Balkan in both of those races. Uh, and Kyle, I know you were hanging out at some short, short tracks this weekend as well. Yeah, Keith Rocco won the opening event at the Thompson Speedway. We talked about the icebreaker with Eric a little bit ago. Uh, a classic race between Keith and Mike Christopher Jr. there for the Modifieds. Um, other than that, I'm doing some research, a lot of rainouts this year or this week. Uh, I know Hickory Motor Speedway, I believe, had a rainout. Kingsport Speedway for the second consecutive week in Tennessee, um, a rainout. Langley uh, was able to get their race program in. They featured the uh, Modifieds. Chris Johnson picked up the win there. Ryan Huff won in the Super Trucks. New Smyrna Speedway, I feel like every other week they are getting rained out. So uh, Hopefully Mother Nature starts to cooperate with some of those tracks down south that need to get shows in, uh, obviously after having a, a shortened schedule last year because of the COVID shutdown. A lot of season openers this weekend, though, including our buddy Jeff Striegel. Uh, we had him on a few weeks ago, the, the new general manager at the Berlin Raceway. He will also promote an icebreaker event this weekend uh, to open up their season. Year number 71 of racing at Berlin Raceway, and it will feature the super late models. Yeah, another uh, track that we've talked about, Kingsport Speedway, was supposed to actually open, I believe, this last past weekend. Rain got them as well, so their opening weekend will be this up-and-coming weekend. So, again, if weather allows it, which uh, I've looked around this area, it looks to be a beautiful weekend here around the Carolinas this upcoming weekend. Uh, get out. Support your local short tracks, and we'll have more touring action in the next couple weeks as the Arc Menard Series takes on Talladega in two weeks. Again, we've talked about the Spring Sizzler in two weeks, so it's all coming. We've got spring happening now, and uh, with spring comes spring showers. What is that? What is that saying? April? April? Showers grows May flowers or something like that. April showers bring May flowers and uh, racetrack guess, rainouts. Uh, that's what it is. Kyle and I clearly did great in the school books. But uh, again, thank you to Eric Goodell for joining us here on NASCAR Coast to Coast. And congratulations to him and Josh Berry again on their wins this past weekend. We'll see you guys next week here on NASCAR Coast to Coast. I'm Hannah Newhouse for Kyle Rickey and producers Julian Council and Alexa Henry. And we'll see you guys next week.